Okay, good point. So, good point. Very, very. Today I'm making a video on how to speak dog language. And today I've brought my case study, Alvis, a Rhodesian Ridgeback, who I'm taking all the way into central London to see if I can get him to be relaxed and calm through communication. If a dog ever feels unsafe, it's got a defense response of fight, freeze, or fight to protect itself. Now, if a dog is using those defense responses, it's providing for its own safety needs, and that's not good, and we can see real excessive behavior from barking and lunging and attacking down to running away from other animals, running away from dogs, being scared, nervous, going within themselves. So what a dog will do is it will do subtleties, it will communicate subtleties of language before it gets to the extremes. And today, on my mission with Alvis, we're going to look at those subtleties and I'm going to react so we don't become extremes. So when a dog has a defense response of flight, freeze or fight, flight, running away, very clear. But you'll also see walking away or avoidance behaviors such as turning the head. And when it comes to freeze, you can see a dog doing a submissive freeze, getting low in the situations, or for example, slightly uh, putting their head down. Or there's an assertive freeze. They might go up and try and take situations square on. Now, people don't see all the subtleties of behavior from walking away, turning their head, submissive freeze, getting lower than, assertive freeze, square up to the situation. They usually only see fight, aggressive freeze, and fight. And because they miss out on those subtleties, it then goes to the dramatics. straight away as soon as you get off the tube there's somebody waiting right there so I swap sides have him on the side away from each danger and then he feels protected anytime he feels a problem my body language goes in you don't know if you just saw that there's a little shake we just had uh, and often dogs give a little shake to shake off stress because they can find situations slightly upsetting we might see a yawn stress yawn shake watch out for all of that now it's going to go right into the deep end So I'm just making sure as he's looking around just to kind of be there in front of him all the time. So if he tries to get in to have a look, I'm just using my leg just ever so slightly to let him know I've got it all covered. So you can communicate with your legs, your arms, your voice, your whole body. The more you use, the better. And if you can get in the habit of using all that, it just adds to the communication. It makes it a bit more clearer. to do that before I picked up on it. I saw the scooter guy coming down, I didn't react quick enough. But this is the thing, you've got to kind of reflect on your actions and go, right, I'll, I'll be quicker next time. leap ever but really you shouldn't go from countryside to London you should do everything in stages but today's about seeing those reactions reacting in time and making sure we don't get any extreme behaviors which we won't with him but if you've got a dog with extreme behaviors don't come to London worst place you can come 
Jesus. So this is what Only a Dog is all about. It's always about assessing the environment, really thinking it through, thinking about their language, thinking about their environment, how they feel in that environment, and how they communicate how they feel in that environment. And then for you to pick up on these signals, whether they're too hot, they're too cold, they feel a little bit nervous, they feel really nervous, and react, and react constantly. Show them that you're there all the time to fight for their needs, because when you've got that, you have such a strong bond with your dog, because they feel that they, and that you understand them. He was just walking out in front a little bit there, and this is the issue with letting a dog walk out right in front of you. It can start with just a little bit of excitement or a little bit of curiosity, but the more they get in between dangers and you, the more they start learning the wrong information. And the information they need to learn is that you'll protect them, so you'll be in front, you'll deal with every situation, whether that's just walking out the front door, whether that's dealing with a plane going by, whether that's dealing with a dog that's running up trying to scare him. It's about getting in front and showing the dog that you'll take care. So when your dog starts to try to get in front, put language in. Sometimes when they look around like that, they're just trying to take in all the information. And if you kind of do a 360 around the dog to show them all's okay, you can communicate, I've got the situation covered. Once they understand that, you'll be like, right, come on, Elvis, let's go. He got set off there by the skateboard, and then he saw a dog afterwards, and the skateboard sent his state up. And then when he saw the dog, which he's not normally that bothered about dogs, uh, that irritated him a lot, and then he carried on looking, thinking, all this is a problem. So I had to choose flight, get him out there as quickly as possible. Because I'm not his owner, he's resisting. Uh, but I'm still saying, come on, let's get you out of here. If you've got a dog that trusts you, they should just follow. But it involves lots of lessons of getting them out of situations, taking them away, getting in front, choosing flight or freeze, and after a while, they'll trust you to provide for their safety needs. Good boy, come on. Good boy, it's okay, it's okay, good boy. Good boy. So a dog walking past, it's going to go to my left. You won't see it now. So. We're far enough away from this dog for it to be too much of an issue, but now he's just focused himself. So we're saying, now nah, I'll take you away from this. No, no, no. No, no. Come on. Come on, good boy. Create a bit of distance between you and whatever the dog's upset about. And then again, you've shown the dog that you'll protect them by taking them away.
Thank you. Cheers. No ah, lovely. It's so nice to be able to come in central London and have a beer with a dog that's pretty well behaved and usually spends all his time in the country. But it's all about getting strong foundations before you come somewhere a little bit busier. But as you saw, a dog that's already relaxed in earlier areas, put a little bit of language in and take them to the next area won't be too much for a problem. Yeah.